This painting has the title of Over English Fields at Night. So let's begin then, shall we, just with a few pencil marks, a basic sketch. Then we'll have a quick look at the colours and we'll begin. Let's start with a horizon line. And another line below that. And we're going to have a large tree here. So we'll just make a little mark where the trunk is going to be. And a little bit further on in the field, we'll have another tree trunk. That's just to indicate where we're going to create the trees. And that's enough. That's all we need to begin. I've made here some red, which I've added to blue to make a purple shade. And I have some very deep green here. Looks a little bit like black. It's made with cadmium yellow pale and Payne's grey. I have some blue on its own here. And also some pale, sort of lime green colour for the fields. So let's begin. I'm going to slightly dampen the sky, a wet onto wet technique. I'm not putting too much water on here. Two lots of water, three lots of water, just to help the colour to begin to blend into the paper. And I'll stop on this horizon line here. And let's begin with some of the colours. Let's take some of the beautiful purple. Oh yeah, that looks great. If I want that a little bit lighter, I've just added some water to my brush and I'll blend from side to side. There are no clouds in this sky this evening. It's an evening sky over the English landscape. Or maybe it, it could be an evening sky over a Spanish landscape, wherever you would like it to be. I'm adding a touch of red now and some water, a little bit more purple, blending from side to side, just like a almost, almost a straight line, but the colours are blending together. Let's finish perhaps with a little blue here. This is cobalt blue. I'll stop on that horizon line. Now, there's my beautiful evening sky. I think I'll leave that now. I have a coin here. I'm going to wrap it in some tissue and make it tight so that the perimeter the edge is quite smooth and I'm not going to press very hard in between the two trees here I'm just going to press lightly this is an evening moon so it's just very gently there we go you can see the color on the tissue that's my evening moon maybe there's a little amount of cloud just passing through the moon. So I'm using the tip of the brush here and some of that damp colour, just pulling that gently across the face of the moon. While the sky is drying, I can begin to add some of the field colour. It's still the early evening, so the fields are still showing up in the moonlight. And again, it's just gently from side to side, blending the colour onto the paper as I go. A 
was probably enough. All I need to do now really is, do you remember the little coin we had wrapped up? Let's not waste the paper. Let's take half of this tissue and scrunched it up into a little loose piece of tissue. I call it a snowball for a mouse. I'm going to take some of my purple here, dabbing into the purple, soaked most of it up, so we may need to slightly take some of that off, and I'm ready to create a tree line here Very gently, I am not pressing hard with this and maybe have a little practice of this first on a spare piece of paper. But look, it's working. I'm pressing a little harder now and as I press harder, a little more of the colour is transferring onto the paper. I'm trying to keep a straight-ish line there. I have a little tiny bit left. I could use some of that. Dip in there and carry on adding some distant trees. I like the way that some of the green from the field has slightly run into the tree line. Wow! This is wonderful here. We've got this misty soft effect. That looks really good. I might just add a tiny touch of blue as well. Again, I'm only using this tissue. It's just a tiny, tiny touch of the tissue and I'm hardly, hardly pressing at all. I'm trying to be very gentle with that. That's enough. Okay, let's move on. Here, along this line, I thought we might do a hedgerow and also a hedgerow in the foreground here. Let's try it. I'm going to take some of my blue that's left and add it to that lighter green and make myself a slightly deeper green. And now, some of the darker green. So I'm looking for darker green but I don't want it as dark as this one. So we've got a dark green there, maybe a little bit of Payne's grey in there. Maybe a touch of red. It's my painting, I can add whatever colours I wish. As I say in every single painting that I do, this is about you having a little bit of fun, having a little bit of time to withdraw from the cares that will not withdraw from us. So now, I'm using the t side and also the tip of the brush and I've swapped over to my smaller number three brush because we're looking over the hedgerow of fields here. There are bushes and little tiny trees, treetops, different things going on in our painting. But you can create it in any way that you wish. It's your painting. You add the colours that you like. Have you noticed that the top of the little bushes and trees tend to be undulating? Now, let's try and do the same along this line here, if we can. But as they're a little bit further away in the field, and making these little hedgerows and bushes a little bit smaller, even some tiny ones very far away here. Very edge of the fields. So, the base here tends to be rather straight and the top of the hedgerow, that is more undulating, 
slightly more little spikes and dips here and there, up and down, holding near the silver furrow of the brush, just using the tip of the brush. Beautiful. Got to give yourself a little bit of encouragement. Really liking that. Now, back to the tree trunks here. I'm going now to use the really dark, dark green. I've got dark green here, I'm mixing around. I've even got some Payne's grey, almost black colour. We'll have a lovely silhouette with this. So I'm going to begin just with a line, straight down. And then, either side of that line, I'm going to just dot, 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 joining dots together, trying to keep my tree reasonably vertical. And at the base of the tree, it's a little bit wider. And there are some branches that are slightly curved upwards, pointing towards the sky. Let's try again. Let's do a second tree. This tree has been here longer. It's a taller tree. It's been here for a lot longer. So we have the main trunk of the tree. You can create a smiley tree if you wish. With these type of shapes getting smaller and smaller and smaller as they reach to the top of the tree. I think I might even make that a little bit taller. Still, it's my picture, isn't it? So I can make my tree taller than the moon, if I wish. Again, what I suggest you do here is practice. Practice the shape of the tree, because it is not a pyramid shape. It is not wide at the base. It is like a church spire. It is quite pointed and reasonably narrow at the base. Would you believe that this painting is nearly finished? All I have to do are a few little dots and dashes. I call this, in my attempt to learn some French, I call this les touches finales. Les touches finales, which I'm told means the final touch or the final strokes. I'm going to make a tree here a little bit taller. Maybe there are some in the distance here. I'm loving the way now that this almost lilac -y purple colour has evolved itself. That wasn't really planned. That's just how it's happened to come out. Wow. There are animals hiding amongst these hedgerows and trees, foxes and badgers and all sorts of things. Once again, I'm really enjoying this. I have to be careful that I do not overwork this. If I do, it could easily spoil. But I think I would like a little bit of shadow that's being created from the moon. I can never believe how strong moonlight can be. The shadows from moonlight. But what I might do here is slightly take some water, a little bit of red there, but that won't make any difference, and a little bit of the Payne's Grey, because I don't want it this too strong for my shadows. Let's just practice that and see. Yes, I don't want it any stronger than that. So I'm going to take a little bit of that and just using the flat of the brush, just going to wipe on, on a slight angle one way from the base of the tree. So we've got a little bit of shadow here and maybe a little bit of shadow from this tree. And maybe, maybe I can make it a little bit darker now. I'm just trying to keep the shadows reasonably 
delicate. Oh yeah. Well, I think my painting is finished. I'm really, really pleased with it. I usually say that I would leave this painting overnight to dry and that's what I do with my paintings before I attempt to take the tape off because what happens overnight or over a few hours is the colours, the pigment blends and bonds to the watercolour paper and it always looks a lot better a few hours or a day later. I hope you've enjoyed watching this demonstration. I really have enjoyed it myself. So there we are. The moon at night over the English countryside. Just to the right here, I'm imagining that I could have a camping tent there, be camping and you and your friends could be camping over here if you wanted to. So, happy painting everybody.